Ready? Marco Zeno has worked with the six rhinos since they arrived in 2015. Nice job. Their 22-hour flight from South Africa was the first leg of a long journey that is far from over. It is pretty amazing that these animals used to be, you know, out essentially in the wild and to come from a place where they had almost no human interaction to hear and work so closely with us every day. Yeah, it's, it's very surprising. Zeno says the animals are friendly and approachable, although he says they work under strict guidelines. All contact is through a protective barrier. So I'll ask her now that she's offered it up, but let's see. Helene, you want to show that again? Even so, there's no hesitation Open. to put an arm there through the is. fence to encourage a behavior. Good girl. Oh, those are nice teeth. Showing teeth is valuable, but the rhinos are here for a different reason. Reproductive physiologist Barbara Durant says she hopes to eventually implant northern white embryos in these six rhinos. The first step is to impregnate each of them by artificial insemination. That will tell us that those females now are proven females. They're capable of conceiving, they're capable of carrying a, a term pregnancy and giving birth. Then we can start to use those animals after they've weaned their babies, we'll start to use those animals for practicing embryo transfer. Durant's team was successful twice. The first insemination happened a year ago. If she'll turn a little bit, you can see her feet. Here, Durant showed KPBS a live ultrasound picture of a 53-day-old fetus inside Victoria. Oh, and that looks like she's got her back towards us. Mm -hmm. She's moving in there. The fetus was about the size of a double-A battery back then. We watched it grow. We were doing measurements. We could see as the, the limb buds were forming, we saw the heart forming. Now it's so big that it is not up close where we can see it. It has fallen down into her abdomen, so it's way down in here now. Durant says the baby is so big now that it's too hard to get a full picture on an ultrasound machine. These recent ultrasounds show a baby that's growing and developing normally. Durant guesses the rhino is the size of a laundry basket now, although it's admittedly hard to tell. So this is Victoria. And you can't tell from the outside that she's pregnant unless you're lucky enough to see the baby kick, which we often can see from the outside. If we're really lucky, we might see it right now. But you, you really can't tell. She, she hasn't gained that much uh, girth. The next crucial point comes in a month or two. Durant says Victoria will probably become restless and move away from the other rhinos when she's ready to deliver. It's normally not, not terribly long. You know, in humans, you often hear about women being in labor for hours, 10 hours, 20 hours, 30 hours. That, doesn't, that does not happen with these animals. And you can understand why in the wild that would not be a good thing to have a prolonged labor in the wild because the animal would be debilitated and, and would be uh, subject to predation. Victoria and another rhino, Amani, were both artificially inseminated. Amani is due in about five months. And Durant hopes three more rhinos will be pregnant soon. The next stage involves implanting an embryo that's conceived in the lab, but there's an obstacle. That embryo has to be delivered through a tight channel that curves back and forth for several feet. So in my lab, we're developing robotic tools. The solution might come from a UC San Diego robotics lab. This is basically like trying to hold on one end of a spaghetti, flexible spaghetti noodle, and get the other end to uh, move in a specific way. It's extremely difficult, nearly impossible. But with robotics, we can actually solve that problem. Tomorrow, we'll explain how San Diego researcher Michael Yip is working on a tool that could save the rare rhinos from extinction. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.